the latest brew with a blue here on the Blue Room YouTube channel. Hope everybody's staying safe and enjoying these videos, putting out every week. Um, we had some good comments on Rob Beavers yesterday. We've got another great guest today in Jack Carlisle. Jack, thanks very much for, for joining me this morning. Uh, you've had some bit delayed today because I was uploading last night's 11 show, which was an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> So it was one of them, but uh, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, yeah, uh, not so bad. Very much enjoyed um, being the host the last night's show. It was uh, it was very good for those who haven't listened yet. Um, a surprising ending, but yeah, I very much enjoyed it yourself. Yeah, it's, it's one of them where, like, it's sort of halfway through, and obviously when I record these and all the other videos, you get, like, a little timer in the top corner. It tells you how long it's been going for. And I remember Mike Diaz was still talking about his full box. I mean, around 50 minutes. It was a bit like, oh. <laughs> so, so I, had, I had to send a text message to all 11 of WhatsApp groups. So it's like, come on, lads, you might have to speed it up a bit here. But no, the app been done enjoyable so far. Um, I would encourage anybody who's not, who's after a bit of light hearted listening, who's not listened to them already. Yeah, it's patreon.com slash the Blue Room Extra. Um, all sorts of, of shenanigans. I mean, what, so, so far we've done them. Yet today's one was. Well, I'll let you explain, actually, because you were the host and therefore you got yeah, to... Yes, so um, yesterday's one, I was the host with um, my last-minute victory over Mr. Diasha last week. So <laughs> the topic I chose yesterday was the over-rated slash over-hyped 11. So it was all those to do with players that we brought in that sort of either were over-hyped to the point of ridiculousness before they'd even kicked the ball, or on the other hand, players that were sort of pretty free of any criticism despite the performances on the pitch and I think what was really good about yesterday's was there wasn't too much crossover I don't want to go into who people pick but I think because everyone's got their own view of players that haven't performed for whatever reason and ones that as you say would be free from the ire that some players would attract so I think it made it a um, very interesting listen and a good insight into how people view some of the current squad even. Was there, um, was there anyone that you were sitting there as the host thinking that the lads have not mentioned that you would have definitely had in yours? No, do you know what? There, there was a couple other things I mentioned early on that I think will obviously they'll be in the team that I picked. But outside of that, I think most of them hit every box with going like as far back as like John Collins and then a few oh. yourself that were in... Um, the present day, but now I think in the past there's been ones that like with sort of the limbs eleven and with um some of the disappointing ones where I've like I've automatically thought of someone that might not have got a mention. But as for yesterday's now I think I, I think they tick most boxes. No, no, it was, it was really enjoyable. Like I said, if you want to listen to that, uh, do check it out it's over on Patreon. Uh, an hour and forty five minutes. They broke my laptop this morning and getting that uploaded. But uh much to get it done. Uh, people who are watching this on Wednesday morning that'll be out about uh, Wednesday afternoon, but um, yeah, just just here to have a have a chat, Jack. Um, you know, I know you're still working during these these interesting you know times and stuff. Uh, you are working from home at the moment. Um, how are you finding it all currently? Yeah, it's okay. I mean, it, it, it's been a mix. I think at the minute I'm doing like um, one morning a week in the office, and um, just as like a general catch up, just me and one other guy, like observing all the social distancing, but just having some face to face time. Um, because like the servers with it's not the biggest, so getting everybody on like a Microsoft Teams or a Skype or a Zoom at the same time can be pretty difficult with people being all over the place. But it's been all right. Um, I'm I'm still like pretty busy considering like I'm at home. I'm able to do ninety ninety five percent of the stuff I want to be able to do it from here, um, and just minimizing contact with the outside um, as much as I can. To be honest, like. I'm still going out once a day um, just for like a bit of exercise if I'm not going into the office and same at the weekend. But other than that, yeah, it's okay. It's just, I can't believe it's only been two weeks. Yeah, it's crazy that, isn't it? I was thinking about that myself. It's, it feels like it's, it's been a lot longer. I think we sort of bookmark it by the footy, don't we? Yeah. Like the, the game that I sort of was using a while ago to bookmark how, you know, how all this is going on was the um, Atletico Madrid Liverpool one in the Champions League. And that's, that's over a, a month ago now. So you feel, you, you, sort of, you sort of look back at that, but it's not actually been that long. We've been like forced, not, not forced to stay inside, but we've been given government guidelines that we've got to stay inside. And, you know, we've had yeah. 
you know, the videos on social media of police pouring water in people's barbecues and that sort of stuff. But mm. you're right, I feel like it's it's gone on for a lot longer than it actually has already. No, that's it. And I think as well, it's, um, I'd, I'd seen something, oh, it was in a WhatsApp group yesterday, and it was l- like this time last week or maybe the day before, someone put, can you believe the United game was this month? Because wasn't that at the very, very start of March? Yeah, yeah, it was. So yeah. it was like all that had happened in a month. And I think like, because up to that Atletico Liverpool game, was that, on, was that on the Wednesday night? Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. And then all the Europa League games on the Thursday pretty much were blanket cancelled. I had to play behind closed doors and they yes. LASK. That's it. But it was pretty much the bookmark for me, as, as you say, it's like a good point of reference would be that because we were then meant to play Liverpool on that Monday, weren't we? Yeah. Nothing really has been the same since then, has it? I don't know. It was if everything was still up and running, should we have played any more games, Everton, since the derby? We were going to have that three-week break, weren't we? So I don't think we would have done because we were meant to be playing Norwich at where you weren't we? But they got through in the cup, didn't they? In the cup, so they would have been playing United that weekend, and then we had a two-week break after that. So I think we still would have been. No, we not, I think was it, was it next Monday were we meant to be playing Leicester? Have I got that right? I think the next game was meant to be Leicester at home, yeah. So, which is mad to even think about. So, God knows what you would have done. <laughs> you know, <laughs> in regards to the content and stuff, but are you getting that pang yeah, for the, for the footy or, or not? I, I have to say that the, you, you're shaking your head. I mean, the club put that video out yesterday of, um, of Phil Jelkin's goal against Arsenal. You know, the game where he was sort of parachuted into the team before just before kickoff last season. Um, oh, when he scored the header from the long throw. Yeah, he scored very early on. Um, you know, Michael Keane got injured in the warm up, and I sort of watched that. I remember how well the team played that day, and how how enjoyable a day that was. Just how enjoyable this part of last season was. You know, where we beat Chelsea, we beat Arsenal. Obviously, the United game where we won four 0 was a bit later in April, but mm-hmm. I did get a bit of a pang watching that at the start, thinking I wouldn't mind being, you know, in the booze at an half twelve when it's it's you know the weather's nice. You're in the courtyard at Rigby, you make your way up to the park. <laughs> You after it, it's all those little things apart from the match as well. That you know, it did just start to enter me mad like, oh, bloody hell, I'm not entirely sure when we're going to be able to do that again next. No, I, I know what you're saying. I think, yeah, I'm probably similar, if not a little bit less. So, for me, like, when it all got binned, like going back this time last month with um, with the derby, I was sort of like, oh, well, that's good, so that, that's going to mean that still wasn't sort of fully thingy with how serious everything was. No. Fast forward to now, and as you say with the clips, there's also that element of like this time of the season more than any, because a lot of the times, as bad as it is, we're out the cups. This is when we usually have like a good run. We usually finish like historically yeah. <laughs> when the sun's out towards April, May. There's not too much to play for outside of finishing as high as we can. We usually have some good days. Like I, I think back to that United day, how sunny that was. Was it? Was that a bank holiday weekend as well? Grace, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it might have been Easter. I think it might have been Easter weekend. Yeah, and um, the Arsenal one, I remember it being just an incredibly one-sided one-nil, and also how sunny it was then. And there does seem to be something about like them sort of Sunday or like Saturday lunchtime games, whatever it be, when like the sun's out, it's towards this part, like around Easter. We do seem to turn up more often than most at this part of the season. I don't have any stats for it, but. You know, you just get a gut feeling that this is when we tend to win home games quite comfortably. Yeah. It's the part of the cycle where we're all thinking ahead. We're all talking about this season, but saying, oh, next season we're all we're going to be boss. You know, we're putting foundations and building blocks in place for the next campaign here. Um, and inevitably, it all ends up no, no. at the start, all unraveling at the start of the next season. Uh, but yeah, like, like I said, I think I'm starting to miss it a little bit now. But uh, doing these videos and stuff certainly helps. Uh, Jack, uh, ask you to wear your favourite footy shirt. Everyone who's yes. done this so far, everyone who's done this so far has gone for an Everton one. You're the first person to not pick an Everton shirt, um, and it is quite a kit, that to be fair. Yeah, um, I got it last summer um, when I was in the states. I'd seen it sort of on a few pictures. Um, the French players wearing it. I believe it's the 2019 away shirt, but I love polka dot tops and then the rose gold as well for the badge. Um, and very very good side as well. So yeah, I am very very much into this this uh, this stuff. 
got Luca Dean on the back or anything I like don't, that? I don't, no. To be honest, I was thinking when I was watching him last week, I can't remember who it was that you asked. Might have been Cy Magna um, about names on the back. Um, I don't, I can't remember the last time I had a name on the back of any top, be it Everton or otherwise. I mean, I haven't bought an Everton one in probably five or six years now, but um, I don't know. I just, I don't know if it's a thing I do now, unless it was sort of, I will tell you when it was. I bought a, um, a retro one from a, um, a training festival last year, and it was the Columbia one from the mid 90s. And it come with the um, the the name and numbers on it, so it was like ten Valderrama, and it had, that, it had the number ten on the front. Um, and I got it to go to Glastonbury with, and it shouldn't have gone in the washing machine because of how old it was, and the number just completely peeled off. I was oh, absolutely oh, gutted. It was one of them as well, though. Like it was probably a blessed in disguise because it was one of them mid nineties Reebok, like you know, when the materials almost like a tea towel. So yeah, like yeah. it was just horrendous, horrendous when it's hot. So it was probably um, for the best because you don't think how heavy some of them '90s tops were. Yeah, and you think about that World Cup in the States in the summer of '94 as well. That, yeah. I think that was the top when they all would have been wearing them. It would have been boiling hot, you know. Yeah, that much hair. Must have been an absolute nightmare to wear there. But yeah, I think I think um, that, that that France won. France are always a national team of things. Like, I've got a Germany one on here. This yeah, is that's, after, that's a lovely colour, though. They won after the, the World Cup. Um, they, won, they won this for the Euros, I think, in the summer of 2016. But I think France, of all the teams, maybe France and Argentina have got, like, tend to have the best international kits. I can't remember the last time a France kit came out. You know, I, I even think back to those ones they wore when they won the, the European Championships in 84. Did they win it in 84? I think it might have been 84 when they won the European Championships in the World Cup. Yes. And, and the World Cup in 98 was like a retro version, wasn't it? it had like the, the thick red stripe. The red band, that got like so nice. Yeah. And like yeah. The, 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 like the three like, uh, thin white lines across the front of it as well. But I think France have consistently always had the best international kits. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, think, I think as international teams go, they do seem to, um, them and Argentina and another personal favourite, like, just for like the um, probably the Coleman kit, as, as bad as that sounds, is is Holland. I think yeah. they've had some really really nice kits over the years. Um, the total ninety one aside, remember was it about two thousand and four when all the teams that were sponsored by Nike had basically the same kit, <laughs> just with the um, the yeah. circle on the front. Um, I yeah. That one where it's Portugal and Brazil, and they're doing like you do. Oh, like- they met each yeah. other. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. Everyone had the same kit on, like the circle, the number in a circle. Yeah, on the f- yeah. Figo and uh, Carlos and that, wasn't it? Yeah, and Ronaldinho was knocking around and he wasn't quite in prison then. Oh, that's yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, going back to the names and numbers on shirts, I think the, the last one I got for us was when Arteta went to number 10. And I think I was about 14 then, 13. So we went from number 6 to number 10. I don't even remember. He changed his number. I was like, "Oh, he's Arteta's oh, number ten. I'm gonna have to get definitely gonna have to get this on the back of my shirt." It must have been about 2006, 2000, right. something like that. Uh, okay, so this, this was um, was this when he stopped playing on the wing and just yeah. as he started playing in the middle and like his game went like. I think it was after he signed the new contract and he like the club was like sort of trying to build them up loads and he, he got the number ten shirt. I right. remember. Yeah, it, yeah, it was the it was the year when the Premier League changed the style of numbers. I don't, like they went to like a different lettering. Yes, it, yeah, I, th- I think yeah, no, I think you probably I think that was around two thousand seven. I think yeah, that was the last time I got the only two I ever got with names on the back was that one. I had a Gary Speed one as well when I was really young. That's it. Speed number ten, yeah, yeah, but right. I'm not on the back of any others. I've had a few. I think um, most recent ones I can remember. Um, I used to be a keeper, so I had um, oh, Paul boy. Gerrard on the back of an Everton away <laughs> top because my dad told me Myra would probably leave. Then after that, I couldn't bear Steve Simonson, so I just got Carlisle on the back. And then in terms of outfield players, I had Beatty when he signed because remember we just released the. Do you remember the black kit we had when he, around the time he signed? Yeah, so, I know what you mean. I, I can't remember. I, I think it might have been the third kit. Yeah. But I think I had, I had BC number eight and then um, I had McFadden 
and um, Valente. Valente? Yeah, wow. Valente. I've still got the Valente kit, and it was the the Chang one with the, the white down the sides there. Uh, like the two, two little lines on it. Two little lines, yeah. Um, Nuna, yeah. Valente. Is that, is that what inspired your headband you've got on now? Is that really I think okay? so, yeah. I don't know if it was to keep his fringe out of his eyes, but he wore an Alice band very well. Uh, no, I just, I always liked him. I don't know. It was, you know, one of them players, like, that... He might not feature all the time, but just when he plays, you like watching him. And I always thought he was pretty decent when he was uh, when he shifted a bit of timber. Like I thought he was good. <laughs> he was in the total mighty team as well, wasn't he? The Portugal yeah. one. You would have been in the team for that, haven't they? Champions League winner. Yeah, of course. Yeah, bloody hell! Wow. Yeah, <laughs> some classic players there. You had on the back of your shit. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful <laughs> stuff, uh, Jack. Yeah, I really enjoyed it, mate. Um, yeah. I, I, I hope you stay in shape. Um, enjoying the 11s, great kit, really great kit. I, I want to see the Valderrama one next time. To, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll dig it out. As I say, I've got I've got quite a few still at my mum's and dad's. Um, so if I don't find that, I'll certainly bring either the McFadden 0304 <laughs> Kedjan one, the bright yellow. That's the tail era McFadden. Right, so it was. I think it was. Uh, it was before the Red Mohican. Um, it, <laughs> remember the Kedjan kits? How big they were. So it fits me now. So like they were so big back then. Um, I think it was the shorts on one of the kits were dead small, and the tops were long, and then vice versa. It was the season after one with the stitching on that was skin tight. Yeah. yeah. Is that, that was the Rooney one when he scored in, wasn't it, against Arsenal? Very same, yeah. All the players must have got to the size down because he looked really good in, on them. But then yeah. A regular, a regular fella. Didn't look Not the same. Didn't yeah. Look at all. But I uh, really enjoyed that, mate. Um, thanks very much for coming on. Um, no problem. And uh, we'll speak to you again soon. For, for everybody else out there, hope you're enjoying these. Uh, go back and watch the, the other ones we've done so far as well. Uh, we spoke to, to Rob Vera, like I said. Uh, yesterday, yeah, Dave Downey on Monday. So we've had good guests already this week. I've got Adam Jones from Liverpool Echo coming up tomorrow. And um, I think Mark Mosey's doing this on Friday as well. So plenty more to come. We're going to try and get as many different guests as possible. Uh, subscribe. I think it's down here. I'm going to get this right one day. I'm pretty sure it's there. Uh, press that button. Share, like, comment, all those sorts of things as well. It really helps us uh, get this stuff uh, to many other as possible. Uh, thanks again to Jack. And we'll speak to you again very soon.